We greet you once more today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in this time of meditation, we shall bow our heads in prayer. Beloved Father in heaven, we thank you again for the opportunity of coming together, praying and studying your word, and also the privilege of prayer that you may hear our prayer and help us in this life. We thank you so much, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that you will guide us, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ once more. Everyone who is watching through television at home, wherever you are, sometimes at work, I also greet you and wish you God's blessing in your life. Uh, the point which we are going to discuss today is about the book of Revelation, which speak in the point of the last condition of the people on earth, particularly we call it the last church. It is called the Church of Laodicea, but we just want to include everyone, whether you go to church or you don't go to church, you are included in this point. There is no middle ground. The headline says, knowest not that you are wretched. So the meditation is based on the book of Revelation, chapter is 3. We are going to see uh, verse 15, 16, and 17. It reads thus, To the church of Laodicean, which is the last, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Verse 17 goes on saying, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knows not that thou art wretched, number one, miserable, number two, poor, number three, blind, number four, and naked is number five. So I'm going to dwell much on the verse 17. But before I go into that verse, there is a cry which was done by Jesus Christ when he was still on earth. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 8, it says that, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Jesus is having a problem that in the last days, the most uh, rare ingredients in human life is faith. So Jesus is saying, when Jesus shall come, shall he find faith? Now, the question is, why are we having no faith. In fact, we have two kinds of people in the church. We have two kinds of the people in the world. In that particular book of Luke chapter 18, there is a parable which Jesus spoke after uh, he spoke with Pharisees and one publican. In chapter 18 verse 9, I'm going to dwell much on biblical issues so that we can share what the Bible says together. It says in verse 9, and he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves. The problem we have is self-righteousness, trusting in self, thinking that salvation is going to come from our own. We are real wretched people. That they were righteous and despised the others. Verse 10, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now let's begin by the publican what he was saying. We call them the need nothing Pharisees because the publican will be the second indeed. In verse 11 of chapter 18 it says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not as other men, are uh, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as these publicans. In that church, they were before the 
presence of the Lord, kneeling down. And this gentleman, he is even pointing a publican who also was in the church. That the way I'm so good, I'm so righteous, I came to church, I need nothing. I don't even need mercy because I'm so good. I'm not even like these publicans. He pointed right there. Or even this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now, the publican also stood up after one pray, as I said that we have two people in the world, as even in the church. And the publican says, and the publican standing afar off, he could not even approach the whole righteous Pharisees because he considered himself sinner. He said, a publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his chest, saying, God be merciful to me, sinner. This is a condition in which God said, you are saying that you have need of nothing, you are so rich, and the abundance is just overflowing, uh, flooding you, but you must recognize that you are wretched, blind, and in fact naked. So Jesus said in conclusion of this verse, for everyone, and said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. So the devil went up and is down today. And Jesus came down and is up today. We are having a great conflict within our hearts. This war, it is not a question that I can even ask you whether you know that there is a war. You know it. There is a war. In Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7, verse 23, he said, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So there is war, and Paul was so honest that there is a war, and in fact this war was declared in the Garden of Eden, where the, the Lord of Heaven, by the plan of salvation, he said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and he shall bruise his head you shall bruise his heel. So eventually there is this great controversy which is going on and which makes us wretched people. Two laws warring against each other in our minds. The cosmic conflict over God's character in our minds, in men's mind, is a serious problem which makes men to say that I need nothing. Eventually, Apostle Paul, in the very same letter to the Romans, he was so, you know, he, he was so frank. He wrote in chapter 7, verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the board of this death? The greatest enemy of each and every individual is death. Death has got no respect. Whether you are a doctor, you will die. Millionaire, you will die. You are educator, you will die. You are scientist, you will die. You are astronomers, you will die. No matter who you are, we have a problem of wretchedness because of sin and we will die. But Paul understood that praise Jesus Christ who was willing to die and he was willing to purchase the price of our redemption. Eventually, at that particular moment when Paul say this word, it reminds me in the very same chapter of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, that Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door, and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in with him, uh, to him and will sup with him and with me. You know, supper is the last meal where there is no more meal at that day. This is the last which we can consider to omega of the food. To eat meal, particularly the chief evening meal, when you see in the book of Luke chapter 14, he, 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 then said, he also to him that bade him, when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees again in that chapter, 
And when he, he and one of them that sat uh, in the meat to, to eat in that supper said, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of heaven. He understood the little point which Jesus was, was, was talking. So we have a great invitation, beloved friends, in this wretched time, in this time where people seem to uh, enjoy life, they drink in your, I mean, beer in order to satisfy themselves. Some they go on consuming the drugs. Some end up in the camp of rehabilitation. And people, they are eventually dragging their mind that they may not even have faith in Jesus Christ. But the Bible says God is inviting. In that book of Luke chapter 14 verse 16, I'm just quickly reading here. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, excuse me. There are so much excuses which are done by humanity in order not to believe in God, in order not to adhere to the invitation. But let me tell you, the greatest supper which will be eaten is the supper when Jesus shall come down on earth to take the wretched people under the bondage of the devil where we will be with him. And in the book of Revelation, this is insinuated here. Chapter 19, verse 6, it says, I heard as it were the voice of great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigned. The kingdom of the devil is being counted its days. He is not going to be the last. Troubles and tragedies which we are passing through, they are not going to be the last. They are about to finish. The devil himself know that his days are really counted. And he goes on saying, let us be glad, in verse 7, and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. And to her, to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You know, we may be wretched. We may be blind. We may be naked. But we are going to be covered because God, Jesus, paid it all. All to him we owe. And indeed, today, we can praise God for what he has done. In, in chapter 19, verse 9, it says, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. You know, when you are invited by God, he, Jesus is standing at the door and eventually he's knocking. He does not need you to cook for him. He's saying, I've got food. The world is starving by the food which is the life and the bread of Jesus. Because it's not by bread a man shall live, but by every word which proceed from the mouth of Jehovah, then the man shall live. People are hungry of the truth. People are hungry of salvation, but they seem to be not knowing, not be aware that they are wretched, they are naked. Now let me just conclude by, in the book of Romans, Closing ears from hearing the voice of Jesus. In the book of Romans it says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? In verse uh, 17, in the very same chapter, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. People are closing their ears. They have nothing to do with God. They, in fact, there is a part which says, we, we, you are miserable. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7, it says, And if Christ be raised not, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they saw that which also that uh, which are fallen asleep by death 
eventually, are perished. If in this life only we hope in Christ, we are of all most miserable people. Consequently, Jesus conquered death. For in Adam all dies. Even so, in Christ, all will be made alive. So death is not going to be the last. They, also, that section says, you are naked. In fact, the nakedness was in the Garden of Eden. And he's calling us to know that in the Garden of Eden, people were naked. And lastly, unto Adam, they were clothed in order for them to be fine. Finally, it says, behold, I come quickly. As a thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked, and they shall see their shame. Blessed be one who will be accepting the invitation from God. I want to thank you for having your time to listen to this message, and we want to thank you, beloved. Stand on the truth, and shall we just have a word of prayer before we dismiss? Gracious Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for you have seen that we are naked, we are wretched, we are blind, and indeed, in the time of your work here, the Pharisees, you were continually saying, oh, you blind and foolish Pharisees, blind and hypocrites. Lord, we thank you for bringing Jesus Christ into our lives. He is knocking to my, my heart. He is knocking to each and everyone's heart. If we hear his voice, let us not harden our hearts. We pray that you bless us by dwelling with us and supping with us in Jesus' name. Amen.